Good morning, and thank you for attending this press conference. Uh, there's a, a few investigations I'd like to update you on. The, the first one in, in January 2015 through uh, March 2015, uh, an individual dubbed the Tunnel Rat Bandit plagued the, uh, the City of Toronto with uh, eight bank robberies in the matter of a uh, few months. Uh, this individual was uh, unapprehended up until uh, May 13, 2015 when the Canadian Bankers Association in partnership with the Toronto Police announced a $10,000 reward for the information leading to the arrest and conviction of this individual. Uh, because of that information uh, being put out there by the media and tips from the public, the Toronto Hold-Up Squad was able to identify the individual responsible and on the 19th of July, pardon me, the 18th of July, 2016, uh, Ryan Patrick Flaherty, uh, born in 1988, was arrested and charged with nine counts of robbery and nine counts of wearing disguise. Mr. Flaherty uh, had fled to the western provinces of Canada to uh, avoid apprehension and uh, uh, was arrested uh, in Toronto after, uh, after hold-up squad officers made contact with him. His next court date is the 16th of August uh, 2016 in Scarborough Court at 9 a.m. Because of the information that we received from the public, um, the Toronto Police is recommending to the Canadian Bankers Association that uh, monies will be paid to some of the tipsters that have provided information uh, leading to his arrest. Uh, because of the, uh, the good work and partnership with the Canadian Bankers Association, we also have another outstanding uh, bank robber, serial bank robber, that uh, the Envelope Bandit, dubbed the Envelope Bandit, this individual started his first bank robbery in December of 2015 in Peel region. He committed uh, one robbery in Peel and then two robberies in Bloor West Village area of, of Toronto. The first bank was a TD bank, the following two were Royal Banks, and then he committed two further Royal Bank robberies in New York region. Uh, this individual uh, last committed a, a bank robbery on March 4th in 2016 and the investigation has gone cold. His MO has always been uh, entering the, the bank wearing sunglasses or uh, some type of hoodie, uh, presenting a note with a large manila envelope, making a demand for cash and indicating he's armed. Uh, we have several good pictures of this individual, so we're hoping that uh, the public's assistance with the, the immediate coverage that we can get some tips leading to the arrest of this individual. And the, we have one further uh, bank robbery, serial bank robbery, that the, the Canadian Bankers Association will also be talking about. Uh, we dubbed him the Construction Bandit earlier this year. Uh, from January to March, he committed three bank robberies, all Scotia banks in the east end of Toronto, two being at 4509 Kingston Road and the other one being at 305 Port Union Road. On each occasion, he went into the bank uh, wearing a hat or a hoodie, wearing sunglasses, presenting a note indicating he was armed, and then uh, fleeing with a quantity of cash. He's described as a male white, six feet to six foot two, uh, mid 40s to maybe even early 50s. Uh, in every occasion, a black four-door Ford Taurus type motor vehicle was seen leaving the scene. Um, the first, uh, and so we're looking for any information, tips from the public. Um, they can call the holdup squad or they can call Crime Stoppers uh, in regards to any information on these individuals. I'd like to invite Malcolm Childers up uh, from the Canadian Bankers Association to speak uh, in regards to these robberies. Thank you and uh, good morning. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Staff Inspector Earl for inviting uh, me here today of uh, the Toronto Police Service. Um, I'd also like at this time to congratulate the Toronto Police Service and their great work in, in the apprehension of the suspect uh, uh, responsible for the Tunnel Rat Bandit, known as the Tunnel Rat Bandit, and we, uh, uh, we are very pleased to see this individual uh, off the streets and, uh, and brought to justice. Um, bank robberies for the Canadian banking industry are a very serious uh, issue. Uh, the unpredictability and the potential for a violent nature of this crime is a, is a huge concern for us. Uh, more than the money stolen, it is actually the innocent people that are affected by these crimes. Um, our employees of all the banks and also our customers that have the right to go to work and in a safe environment and also conduct their business uh, safely. So that is a very, uh, very uh, big concern for us. Um, banks have a long history of working closely with law enforcement and providing any information and assistance uh, that we can to help with their investigations. 
Uh, law enforcement has an excellent track record of getting, uh, getting bank robbers off the streets, and we're very pleased that we can be part of that and provide them with assistance when, when we can. The small amount of money that these individuals uh, steal cannot be worth the risks that they take in getting, uh, getting, uh, getting the money. A message to the bank robbers, and we say this every time, and uh, because of the great work of uh, police services, it, it's, uh, it's very true. Uh, if you rob a bank, you will be caught, and we stand by that, uh, that statement. The efforts by law enforcement and the banking industry to prevent uh, bank robberies and to bring these criminals to justice are clearly working. Staff Inspector Earl has told you today about the ongoing investigations into multiple uh, bank robberies committed by two serial robbers, uh, dubbed the Construction Bandit and the Envelope Bandit. To assist with these investigations, I am I'm announcing today that on behalf of the banks in Canada, uh, the Canadian Bank, Bank, Bankers Association is offering a $10,000 award for each of these series of bank robberies, so, so two individual rewards of $10,000 for the arrest and conviction of the person dubbed the Envelope Bandit and also the person dubbed the Construction Bandit. Some, someone out there today knows who these people are. Uh, we're, we're calling upon them to do the right thing and to call the police or Crime Stoppers, as the staff inspector said, and so to help us to get these people off the streets and, and brought to uh, justice. They are, these are very violent uh, uh, crimes, and uh, we're very, uh, very insistent that we get uh, these stopped and work with police. So thank you very much. and. Uh, we, uh, we hope that somebody comes forward uh, very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Malcolm. Questions? Were there any injuries staying in any of these? Was anyone ever injured? No. There was uh, always a threat of, uh, uh, threat of violence, but uh, there was no one injured in the actual robbers themselves. A threat of violence in each one? The threat of violence, yes. Oh. And how much money in total was taken? We don't discuss the amount of money because it's uh, as uh, Malcolm says that the, uh, the money's not really an important thing here. It's the actual violence uh, or the threat of violence on the bank tellers who are employees. And uh, that's what it's all about here. It's actually, these people are victims. Uh, the amount of money is never really discussed and it's not really important at the end of the day. And the outstanding um, folks that you're looking for, is there a reward for any tips leading to their capital? Yes, <laughs> that's, what the, that's the announcement is. Uh, Yes, so up to up to a ten thousand dollar reward uh, for any information leading to the arrest and conviction of either the envelope bandit or the construction bandit, much like the reward was for the tunnel wrap bandit. The envelope bandit name is <coughs> explanatory. Can you tell us the background of the tunnel wrap bandit name and the construction bandit name? Yeah, the tunnel wrap bandit uh, was, was dubbed that because he fly, he fled into the subway uh, system right after the robberies, and and all the robberies are along the uh, subway line, save and except for one. So uh, that was why he was dubbed the Tunnel Rat. Uh, the construction of an the, the first uh, two robberies, he wore something that uh, was more like a construction vest uh, that you'd see at a construction site. I'm not uh, by no means thinking that he's a construction worker, but it may just be a, a ruse uh, in, in clothing. But uh, he dressed up like a construction worker, and that's why he was dubbed that. What led to the current arrest that you have now? Like what? To, uh, on the tunnel rat, tips, tips from the public led to that arrest, led the investigators in the right direction to be able to put a case together to affect the arrest of Mr. Flaherty. So there's several people who will get the $10,000 reward in that case? They all don't get the, the reward and, and there's, it is discussed between the, the Toronto Police Service and the Canadian Bankers Association of what, how valuable the tips were and, and how much information was provided it depends on it. The, the rewards are up to $10,000. There were some pictures playing on that screen. Can, can you just tell us who we're looking at when they come, or maybe not right now when they come back up? The, uh, as I was walking through them, the, the pictures were shown. The, uh, uh, the first series of pictures has a $10,000 reward on the top, and that's the Tunnel Rat Bandit yeah. that was posted last May. The next series of photos with the light blue hoodie uh, is the Envelope Bandit. He's described as a male white uh, mid 20s to early 30s, five foot five to five foot eight. Uh, he wears sunglasses. Uh, you can see he's got a hoodie over his head, and either a dark hoodie or the light blue hoodie. And he passes a large envelope with a note indicating he's armed. The the last set of photos, which is a darker photo, um, it, it's the construction bandit. 
He's an older male, uh, much taller, wearing a dark jacket, plus a hoodie, plus a baseball cap, sunglasses, and there's a video that plays that, that shows you the robbery on, on one of the incidents. So this is the construction bandit? That's correct. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay, any further questions? Thank you very much again for your time. Mike, if I could just say one more thing. Yes, sir. Uh, I know that you mentioned mic, this morning please. about whether there was any... Sir, mic, oh, sorry. I know you mentioned this morning about any physical injuries, and, and the one thing I like to emphasize that although there wasn't any physical injuries, some of these events to our staff and even to customers are extremely traumatic, and people live with this type of thing for many years afterwards. So although they're not physically injured, this type of crime can really uh, stay with somebody, and that's, that's why we take it so seriously, too. Thank you. Just a oh, sorry.